change the haircut and all right we're live <laughs> Are you a diver and you maybe even take photos or videos underwater? Then this live stream is for you. Because we believe that everyone who takes images underwater is already an ocean ambassador. And to make sure that you can do your job properly and inspire people out there to care for the ocean and eventually protect it, we collected your questions beforehand on social media. And we're going to ask those questions to creative professionals from the industry. And we are sending live from the world's largest water sports show here in Düsseldorf, the boat show, which is taking place from 18th to 26th of January. You want to find us live in Hall 11 at the Pixel World workshop stage. Make sure you follow us on social media, on the Behind the Mask Facebook page and on the Behind the Mask YouTube channel. Turn on your notifications and Most importantly, ask your questions down in the comments and maybe we will even be able to pick up your question and forward your question to our guest. And one more thing, by leaving us a comment, you already have a chance to win amazing prizes. Hello everyone. This is a very, very, very special one because Guillaume Nery is here. How are you this morning? Very good. How come? We had parties on Friday and on Saturday. How do you do that? Like you... It was not too crazy parties. I was at bed before midnight, so... And I wake up and I, I train, so... You've been I'm running? Good. Running yesterday and doing some CrossFit this morning. Okay. Great, great, great. So, what are we talking about? We uh, have a few of your photos that you shot. We also have a few of the films that were produced. I think we can uh, have this one a little bit running in the background. Um, this project, is, th is this the latest project that you've been working on? Yes, latest, like major project. Um, this project is called One Breath Around the World. Uh, we've been shooting it with Julie Gauthier uh, during all the year 2017 and uh, a little bit in 2018. Uh, this project was in my mind since 2014, let's say. Uh, and uh, it took me time to know exactly the final result I wanted to make. Because ah. at the beginning it was maybe, uh, the first idea was, okay, let's make several little short films. And each short film will happen in one place. Then let's make a big documentary. And uh, we put different scene and different artistic parts within the documentary. But it's really not what makes my heart beat, vibrating. I like to trying to create something different, like a artistic thing, artistic uh, product, and uh, not product, but uh, the the idea was really to f really to find something uh, different, and uh, and then came out this idea to make the link between all the places and creating this uh, illusion that is only one breath. I mean, one breath, one world, okay. Uh, if, you, if we see you guys working, like if you work with uh, Julie, it's never really 100% clear like who is doing actually what. I think on this one, you, it's your story, you're the, I don't know if you can say that, the director uh, of it, and Julie Gauthier shot it. Yeah, yeah, on, on the several projects, uh, the role can change. The first uh, video, Free Fall, Uh, which one which we're gonna see a little bit later uh, I was also kind of the director and Julie was uh, grabbing the camera I was like giving her some uh, recommendation and uh, what I had in mind for Narcos the second one it was 100% Julie who was director cameraman and I was just an actor for Ocean Gravity it was again like free fall uh, for the running video I was just an actor and Julie was the brain behind everything for this one It was more my idea. I constructed it. I wrote the script, and uh, Julie was uh, was was filming. Of course, the way we are working together, uh, sometimes Ju Julie underwater, um, we are intuitive. It means that sometimes we bring ideas live. Sometimes she's like, "Okay, I found something. I have an idea. Let's do that." And of course, I follow. But uh, the global idea 
was, yes, more my idea at the beginning. And how did you choose the locations? Is it that every and each location in this uh, film is either, you know, like the easy thing, I always wanted to go there and do that, or is it because you think it's a very magical place, or do you think, or do you pick these locations because they're all different? Like, how do you actually, like, curate the locations that you wanted to shoot in? The idea was really to portray the underwater world. And uh, we could have decided to have like a lot of animals or uh, no animals, uh, only the ocean. No, the idea was to put a little bit of everything to create like, okay, what is the underwater world on this planet? It's fresh water, it's cold water, it's warm water, it's tropical, Mediterranean, big blue, coral, animal, human. So a big mix of everything and trying to pick up the best place for each, uh, uh, yes, like e a, um, for each emotion. Yeah, for each emotion. So um, within all these, those uh, those ideas, uh, the animals have so many choices. I wanted the sperm whale because the sperm whale are uh, they have like a very special shape for free divers. They are like the models, the deepest one. Uh, I really wanted to go under the ice, like in the middle of the film, like moving, traveling, going like very deep inside of the of a cold place and escaping from there and coming back to the surface. Uh, the starting point, I would say, was the first destination we saw on the movie, uh, Yonaguni, uh, this kind of uh, engulfed city. Uh, I've been fascinated by this place. I was looking searching for it on the internet. I knew that Jacques Mayol uh, discovered it in 1985, and he was completely crazy about this place, trying to figure out if it was natural or artificial. And do, do we know? We don't know. I have my idea, but um, I think it's natural. Mm. Even though... Are we talking I about? We're talking about like the architectural, very reduced yeah, the kind architecture of straight shapes. Like, look, like pyramid stairs uh, with clear water, crazy clear water, 30 degrees. Uh, it's really a very, very special place, and I really wanted. Like when I saw this this place, I was like, okay, I want to do s something there, and it was like really the starting point of the rest of the project. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's actually a very clever idea to basically make one film out of it because the power of the images is very condensed. You know, you have so many different locations. If you make a, f you know, a series of films, you would basically have to find a story for each of the places. And, you know, and if you only take the mo most powerful moments and put it into one thing, I think that's a pretty, pretty cool idea. I mean, this video has been all around everywhere on the internet, won all the awards, you know, everybody else looks like beginners uh, <laughs> uh, next to that. I, I know, like when you talk about how the idea is before you do that, I know it is always a creative journey, of course, but it's also like a very practical, technical journey, finding solutions for different things. And in your case, working together with uh, Julie, both on breath hold, and also like bo both doing uh, able to do like amazing things uh, underwater as like very professional free diving I I'm probably going to stay in the water super long being able to you know figure out solutions creative solutions or technical solutions for creative uh, questions can you think back what was the most challenging thing or when it when when it comes to working together like how do you synchronize you know it all looks super easy but you know, I mean, the, the, the people out there always ask, like, how yeah, long do For you example, uh, like, uh, right, what we see right now was maybe was uh, the most challenging part. Uh, because we have to synchronize together. But if you have animals on top of that, you have also to get synchronized with the animal. And you, don't, you cannot control the animal behavior. For this shot especially, I've been asking to Julie for hours to repeat and to repeat and to repeat because we couldn't get exactly what I, I had in mind and at the end I we don't get exactly I don't get exactly what I had in mind but it was impossible to get it it was very hard for Julie because she had to go down so it's a channel 25 to 28 meters deep with a lot of current so um, 
you don't have like several chance. I mean, when you're in the water, you're drifting, and you have to pick up the good moment. And if you don't get it, you need to go back on the boat, and 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 to go back to the beginning of the channel. So it's very, very, very challenging and very hard. Uh, and and I remember to get the perfect synchronization with her, with me, with the animals. <sighs> that was very, very complicated. Is she going first? Depending on the on it, it really depends on the on the on the shooting. Hey, on I the have to ask you, is that a real shot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this one is a real shot. It it's it's really the shot I was dreaming about. Wow. Really. During all the trip with the sperm whale, uh I was I was dreaming about this uh sleeping whales and me going around like uh Like, like, like in, in the middle of a city or in between yes. uh, a spaceship, that was really what I had in mind. And we got one chance, only one chance, and, and we took the chance and we made it. Okay, so just for everybody, imagine, okay, you're in the ocean, you have no fins. Are you wearing a mask? Yeah, you're wearing a mask. Yeah, mask. Okay, you have no fins. So you're not, I mean, you're slow in the water anyway, even with fins compared to everything that is like naturally from the ocean. How... Tell me, how does it feel to be there with like these energy rockets, like basically sleeping there, and yeah. then they start to move? V very, v it's very impressive. But we got several days to get the adaptation with the animals. So the first encounter was a bit scary because because the sperm whales uh, have a very spe uh, s very special way to look at you. They basically analyze you. They go in front of you, and uh, you feel the the um, vibration. Is it like a sonar? Yeah, like a sonar. Yeah, yeah. yeah you feel that. You feel it. Yeah, of course, yeah. you feel it. You hear it. You feel it. You feel like something happening. <laughs> and at the beginning, it's quite strange, and then you get used to it, and you understand that there is just curiosity and no more. And uh, for this moment, when I was in the, in between, uh, and we were in between a lot of them, it took us a, a long time. To, to get accepted. First, I was alone in the water for one hour, around 10, 15 meters from them, then getting closer. And there was, on top of that, a big male with the group. So you better not joke with the big male. And then when you see, it's, it's all about intuition. You feel, you see that they're happy and they're comfortable with you, and you go in between, and then Julie came, and then the photographer, and then the... Um, safety team and then we were part of them and that was that was okay but what i, I have to, to to tell is sometimes on a film like that the most difficult scene to shot are not the deepest one because on on this one um the most challenging thing was that i had to wear exactly the same outfit for all the places so i decided to go for a three millimeter wetsuit Uh, because in warm water is okay, if it's a little bit colder is okay, only under the ice it was uh, very <laughs> challenging. But, <laughs> it was not uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for the sperm whale, for example, I have no fin. The interaction is happening between 0 and 10 meters. A 3 millimeters wetsuit is very buoyant. And I didn't want to have like a big weight belt, so I had to hide some weight under the suit and I had to make every single dive on empty, empty lungs. Like not just passive exhale, not just but to empty completely my lungs. And then to behave in the water like, like if it was easy. And I know sometimes Julie is there, she has the perfect shot. And if I give up at that moment, maybe we lose the, the only chance we can have. So when I see the image, e even me, I forget about that. I see, oh, wow, it's cool. I, 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 it looks easy. But if I really remember what I was living at the moment, it's close to a nightmare, <laughs> really. Okay, guys, imagine, <clears throat> you know, you go to a freediving session and all they say is empty your lungs and hold this for a while. This is already a nightmare for a lot of people who are not used to uh, yeah. free dive or anything. But this is, th this is crazy. And at the same time, yeah, like, are you getting negative? Or are you just neutral? Uh, with the sperm whale, I had a very hard time to be negative. So no, uh, I got neutral 
positive neutral. So sometimes I had to invent movements to pretend I am stable, but at the same time I just do that to maintain my position. But it's very hard because it's a kind of choreography. I don't want to show that I'm in the water swimming, so I try to avoid like real swimming movements. I try to behave more as a human, like if I'm flying. So instead of doing that to keep my position, I prefer to do you know, something like that, like mm -hmm. if I'm in the air. But this is, you're using so much energy and your empty lungs. And uh, you were just swimming 20 meters to get in a good position. And it's now, it's not in 10 seconds, it's now. So it's hard. <laughs> and then after <laughs> that, when you think, okay, I have to uh, get up uh, to the surface, you have to like really use even more energy after that to actually get up to the surface again because you don't have any fins or how does that work? And your lungs are empty. Yeah, it depends on the places. In on, on with the sperm whale, it was okay because I'm I'm buoyant, so I just have to do one one movement and pff, I'm flying to the surface. For the um, uh, that's going to be the next uh, scene for the um, the cenotes. Uh, I had to dive at 30 meters. Cenotes is fresh water. So I don't need to wear weight, and even with a full, full breath, I'm sinking. So I had to have, we, have, we had to have with Julie a special safety team with scooter. Um, because it's hard to do stupid things when you're focused, not just on your breath hold, but you have a goal. You want to get the perfect image. And it's like spear fishers. You can, be, you, 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 you can really, uh, within a second, be in real danger. Because a spearfisher who is down, is out of breath, but then, wow, the fish of his life is passing by. He forget about danger, about breath hold. And it's, it's exactly the same. We are not chasing animals, we're chasing the perfect frame. And when everything is perfect to get it, it's easy to, to do stupid things. Do you have any kind of safety measures in place? Is there somebody else on the surface who can... Always. Yeah. N not just one per uh, person. We have uh, one safety for each of us because Julie is on breast hold and for her it's also very difficult because sometimes, because she has the camera, she is more weighted uh, just to be sure to be stable and uh, she's, she's having a lot of tension underwater to have like very steady shots. So she, have, she has one safety for her, I have one safety, and most of the time we have another one, like a backup, who, is, who can help in case of difficult situation. Did you have any difficult situations? No, maybe on one take with the whale, who is the final, the final scene of the movie, who, who was also the final take of all the trip. Uh, I remember I came out at the surface and I was close to losing Passing consciousness, yeah. Oh, yeah. And my friend was there and uh, I, I got supported. I, I couldn't manage alone, but a few seconds more and I would have blackout. Okay. It might sound like a stupid question, but we ask this question. I mean, I, I can't imagine that you can really be in a moment like this when you have to like, go to the limit of your solo freediving getting the right angle synchronized with another camera woman who is also on, on, on free diving. Are you like, you know, you, there's always a certain emotion in each of the shots. Did you have this emotion? Or did you like were completely blocked by actually getting the shot and filming and with all the things that go on behind uh, the scenes and as, uh, preparing and, and, and performing it? Mm, I, I, at the end, I got so used to the mechanism of, okay, position of Julie, my behavior, it, bec it became an habit and it's like everything. Once you are used to something, you forget about it. You forget, forget about it and uh, I, I can really enjoy. Uh, Depending on situation, of course, but um, but for what we just saw before with the um, uh, in the cenotes, I remember even if it was deep, I was like really enjoying every single part of the of the of the dive. Does this apply to like when you do? Because we we also going to see uh, a few of your photos that you're doing. I mean, I we've been to Antarctica together, so I know that you're a very uh, nature connected guy jumping in the water just for fun to test out the cold before we even get there. Jeez. I remember that in a speedo 
I don't know, four degrees, five degrees, uh, just for the sensation of it, you know? Um, so Fred also said that like, he, if he takes a camera, he basically doesn't give the camera the priority above everything. He's just like, you know, how, how is it with you? If you're f shooting photos, you know, photos uh, like this one, are you actually in that moment or are you shooting all the time when you go uh, free diving or are you taking a, you know, some space for yourself to actually like be in the moment and be in the place or how do you deal with this? As a free diver, uh, I think we have a s very strong connection with our body. So this is something you cannot forget. And I think this is the key to have more time and be more clear in the water on what you, what you want to do. So every time I'm diving, especially for this shot, who was one of the hardest ones to get because I had to dive down to 35 meters, um, and it was after four hours in the water, um, I cannot be like uh, a picture hunter all the time because I'm holding my breath. So when I'm at surface, breathing, I have my camera, but I forget about it. I'm a free diver. I'm a free diver because I need to uh, have all my uh, reflex uh, in place because I know the dive will be long. So the way I'm preparing, I'm not like, there's no tension and I'm breathing and I'm trying to calm down my metabolism like if I was going for a normal free dive. Then on the way down, I try to, to be a free diver, still not even a photographer. Of course, I have somewhere my eye, my eye open to see, okay, light, position of the animal. I know that, uh, like for example, this is Julie and I know she's gonna dive 10, 15 seconds after me. I have all those information in mind but my priority is to stay a free diver. 90% of, of me, free diver. And when I get to the bottom, I switch immediately. This free diving behavior helped me to get down and to feel very good. I'm not fighting, I'm, I'm, I'm really in total harmony with the environment. And now I um, take the... Um, I, I, I use those extra seconds to not rush. Because I know I have, I have time, so I set the camera. The camera, of course, is already set, but I check that everything is in good place. I test the framing. I look at the potential results. And then I just have to wait the perfect moment. But if I was in my mind as a, already a photographer from the surface to down, I think I would have much less autonomy. It would be much more stressful, and I couldn't get images like that. Ah, okay, that, that brings us also to a question that we have. Like, what ca like, how do you set your camera up to be like, you know, if you have to do everything manually, I think you would also have to fiddle around with the camera. Do you have like a shutter priority or anything that you use for your photos? Um, I'm using uh, Aperture, uh, the mode A, so Aperture prior Priority. Um, depending on, it, it really depends on situation. If I have like daylight, beautiful light, I set up my ISO, uh, not automatic ISO, of course. Um, most of the time, it's around 400. Uh, Are you shooting on a Sony Alpha? A Sony, Al a Sony A7R 3 I'm using a Nauticam uh, housing. It's been four years now. I have two setups. One uh, with a wet, uh, wet wide lens. Um, so I'm putting a 28 millimeters. And with the wet wide lens converter, it's end, end up something around 11 millimeters, which is very, very wide, perfect for photography. For filming, uh, I feel more comfortable with the 1635, because depending on the shot I want, uh, uh, we want to get, wide angle, we can make some close-up with the 35. Um, about the setting in photography, as I was saying, 400 ISO, I always underexpose, uh, because I found out that sometimes if there is just a little part of the picture, a little bit too much overexposed. It's very hard with Lightroom to get back, get back the, 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 the details. The, the, yeah, the details. So um, with the sensor and with the setting of the A7R3, I found out that I always underexpose uh, two thirds or one, mm -hmm. one shutter. Uh, I tried to. Um, uh, for the, um, the aperture, uh, I 
I try not to go below uh, 5.6. Most of the time, I'm between 8 and 11. Okay. And that's it, yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I think that answers the question uh, perfectly. Tell us about this moment. Well. <laughs> So last year we've been to Antarctica with Flo and Greg and uh, that was more or less this picture was the reason why we want to get there, to get the perfect in interaction and encounter with, with uh, the Leopard Seal. To be honest, we were here exactly last year and we were like 15 days before departure and I was feeling very anxious. Very anxious for two reasons, because we had to go there uh, with the sailing boat and uh, I'm not a sailor, and for the first time of my life, I will spend more than 10 days on the sailing boat in kind of very rough conditions, and we had to go to the most difficult uh, and the most dangerous place on Earth to sail, between Cape Horn and uh, the peninsula of Antarctica. So I was a, a bit anxious, but we know that we were with uh, a captain with uh, 30 years of experience, so when we get there, I was feeling more comfortable, and I knew that even if it will be hard, it, it will be okay. But then there was the second reason to be anxious, is to, m to meet the leopard seal. Uh, because a lot of pictures that you see with leopard seal, uh, they are like the mouth wide open, you see the teeth, and you know that they are like real predators. And on top of that, we really wanted to go there at a special moment, the moment where they're hunting the uh, baby um, penguins to be sure that they would be around. So when we got there, uh, I remember the first image of this leopard seal. We were sailing and uh, after a few hours in the middle of the icebergs with whales uh, um, eating all around us, it was just magic. It was just before the sunset. Then we saw a leopard seal coming from far away, coming towards the boat. So imagine we had like a big boat. Okay, it's just, it was just a 15 meters sailing boat, but compared to a three meters Leopard Seal, we are much bigger. No problem for him. He <laughs> came straight to us, stopped in front of us. You remember this yeah, moment? I huh? remember this one, yeah. Like with his head, checking at us like, okay, this is my kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome here, but uh, you know that I just say, I rule the place. Oh my God. So that was like the first moment. And I re really realized that this animal like has a strong personality and is, it makes you understand that he is the king. And then for several days, we tried to interact with a uh, leopard seal and, uh, and leopard seal basically were just sleeping on piece of ice, very quiet. We could get very close and they didn't care about us. We tried to create interaction in the water, nothing happened. And two days before leaving the place, we were kind of worried, uh, and the magic happened. Finally, we got this encounter with... So, I don't know, I think it's a female. I also think it's a female. So, big female, free, uh, big female leopard seal, around three meters. And uh, as soon as we went in the water, all the thought we have all the, the anxiety we had disappeared within a second. Because once you're in the water, you become an animal. You're an animal with another animal, and it's all about intuition. And I'm sure Florian could tell the same, but we could feel that there was absolutely no aggressivity. I was actually <coughs> feeling much more comfortable with a leopard seal than with sea lion that want to play with you. Because sea lions, they're like a bit unpredictable, they're playful, they go around you, they bite you. With a leopard seal, they're much more soft in the water. They're graceful. And they were very curious. But this one was very curious. So I spent one hour, we spent all together one hour with, with her. And with the time, she was more and more... Uh, playful with us and I could feel I don't know what we, what you are what you're feeling but I was the only one without um, without bottle of, of uh, without air I was on breath hold and each time I was going down I could see her looking at me and 
come <laughs> straight to me and just go and dance around me, very playful, no sign of aggressivity. It was like one of the best moments underwater. So I had my housing, and after 45 minutes, the low part seal was coming closer and closer, and I think on this picture, maybe five centimeters to the dome, and I got this, this, this picture, which was like a real, real beautiful moment. Oh, yeah. I totally agree. Let's do a question in between. <laughs> Considered your limited time underwater, how can you best plan your shots when free diving so that as soon as you get down, you can snap the shot? We already talked about it, that you're a free diver first, you go down, you change your personality a little bit into being a photographer. But still, when you're on the surface, you're probably going to pick a perfect time or a certain moment. Uh, to do something. Um, how, how is that uh, process? Maybe we can even um, broaden that question a little bit. How is that process together with the model that yeah. is with you? And because yeah. every, like, time is the crucial factor there. So what is important is to plan, to plan everything and to have a proper idea on, what, what, on the result you want to get. Uh, I think this is, this is very important for this picture, for example, it was very challenging to take. It was in a cenotes uh, in Mexico. Uh, it's not a famous one. It's uh, a one that the guy, a French guy, Julien Bord from the school of Pranamaya, uh, he was helping us to make uh, the project One Breath Around the World. So on this cenote, we shot on one breath the descent on the ray of light. And because I love to take pictures too, when we got all the shots, shots I always uh, like to have 20 minutes for me to become the guy behind the camera to take a picture. So this picture is Julien, the French freediver. And uh, what I like in freediving photography is always to have a human. Not always, sometimes there is only animal, but most of the time I like to have a human. And what I like the most is to have a human as small as possible in the picture. To to feel the immensity of the ocean or of the underwater world and to, to make, uh, to, 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 to share this, uh, this feeling I have when I'm down there that I'm very small and I'm, I'm nothing. So I don't like close up when I'm taking picture. I like to put the character in the middle of the deep and in the middle of uh, a, a, a wild scenar scenario. Uh, so on the two pictures, the previous one, I had to go down um, at 20 meters, and I had to go to the limit of the cave. So the cave is like that, and then it opens and gets very wide the deeper you go. So I wanted to get as far as possible, and I asked to Julian to dive and to swim down in the, in the ray. So this, if you don't prepare it before, you, you, lose, you lose your shot. So you have to have a perfect idea on the timing. How long does it take to go down, <laughs> to be in position? You need to have a very good briefing with your model. When does he have to leave the surface? And if everything is clear in your, in your mind, maybe you need one test shot, because it doesn't, maybe it doesn't work on the first try. But then on the second one, for sure, it's going to work. For this picture, we, we did two attempts. And, uh, and when I get there, I, uh, the camera is already set. I do just little change if I see that the light is not as expected. But then I'm ready. It's all about anticipation. Sounds pretty yeah. easy when you talk about yeah. it to go <laughs> no on the deal. broadest uh, part of the cave at 30 meter or whatever deep and you can't even go straight up then. I went there with a scooter on this <laughs> one. Yeah, otherwise it would have been uh, impossible. What is, what is this? Does he have has lights? Or no. is that the reflection of the sun? No, no. Uh, before the... Um, uh, I could see just playing around that sometimes with the mask, if you get the perfect angle with the, with the light, you can have this, uh, this uh, illusion of, of light and uh, of, of, uh, of r r uh, I don't know how you say in English. The, the but, light uh, rays. Yes, light rays. Uh, so I told him, uh, when you come back up, please play a little bit with your head. 
so you can maybe get by chance this reflection. So he knew it, and he was doing like while swimming like that, and I was ready, and I was shooting like uh, um, <coughs> um, half, uh, continuously. Yeah, yeah, continuously, and I got, I got the good moment. Yeah, very good moment, very nice. What, what's on yeah. top of him? Is that it, because it, is that the surface? Because it looks cloudy. So it's a surface, but because uh, 30 minutes before I was working with my photographer, because on top of that. Uh, so we made a film, I made some pictures, but I was working with my photographer to make a book. And uh, my photographer is uh, Franck Seguin, and uh, is working with scuba equipment if he had to go uh, be uh, below uh, 10 meters. So we were working on the edge of the, um, of, of the Senat, and with uh, his bubble, the bubble uh, moved the... Um, the sand that was ah. around the sand notice. So it was, it, wa it was not meant to be there, but I used it as uh, Looks yes, a way to create like something weird. Looks pretty cool. The, um, I think this belongs to... No, is that part of the ocean gravity? Uh, no, thing? no, that was shot in Okinawa, in Yonaguni. Uh, so this is a picture I took from uh, Ryozo Shinomiya, which, which, who is the deepest uh, Japanese freediver. And he was uh, our guide, a guide in uh, Yonaguni to show us this underwater pyramid. And uh, when, we, get, when <coughs> we were done with the shots, always I'm asking, OK, please, can I have 15 minutes for me? And I grab the camera and I take some pictures. And I, I just fell in love with this place uh, because the water is so clear. And uh, what you can see and the under the structure is I, i've never seen something like that so i ask him to go and to stand and sometimes i i, I let the model to do what whatever he wants to do and so he opened his arms i took i, I took the shot and that's another shot how does it feel to be accepted uh, in a school of hammerheads <laughs> I know ah, this, that is, was, this um, is not you, but there is also like you've been in this uh, in the Galapagos. Yeah, uh, yeah. Many I times. took this picture of uh, Australia. She's uh, a Mexican uh, freediver, national record holder, and uh, it was shot in Galapagos in Darwin, so which is the uh, the last island in the north of Galapagos, and which is one of the most incredible places for wildlife in the world. You have basically everything within a little uh, area around the rock. Um, and I had this picture in mind. So this is an example of something that was not just uh, taken by chance. Like before to go in the water, I, I, I really, I mean, yes, I don't have exactly what I wanted. I, wa I, I would have loved to have better one, but this is the best one I got from this idea. Oh, I really okay. wanted to have like the floor covered by uh, hammerhead sharks. I wanted to have like white sand floor, and the idea was to put a model, a free diver, in between, in the middle, and I wanted that the people who look at the video don't see immediately immediately the human. You see a shape, and then you understand after one or two seconds. So um, the problem was that every time Estrella was diving. The sharks were not scared, but they were creating a little space. And I would have loved to have like shark uh, all around her, yeah, yeah. but because I never use Photoshop and I don't like to lie, uh, <laughs> I, I kept the picture like that. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, we have another five uh, minutes, but uh, we could actually um, keep one of the videos running after we give you your applause and uh, say goodbye, <laughs> yeah. we still keep one video running. Which one yeah. should we uh, play? One Breath Around the World, or Ocean Gravity, or uh, mm. Free Fall? No, not Free Fall. Ten years we've been watching this one. <laughs> 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 uh, maybe, I don't know, Ocean Gravity, or if you have, a, I don't know, a last question about One Breath Around the World, just play it again. Uh, it's really up to you. I would, I, would the like, here, I would actually play it with sound. I think Hamdan has a question. I yeah. fiddle around with the video uh, in okay. between so that we can uh, play it so after that with sound. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of questions, but you guys have answered most of them during your discussion. But the one thing that didn't get addressed was your background and your history was as a freediver. That's what you are. You mentioned as well, that's what you first started with. How did you make the transition from just being a pure freediver 
to not only being filmed and photographed, but also taking photographs as well. That was not like... A straight line. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was like uh, everything has been combined. Uh, <coughs> so I started freediving when I was uh, 14 years old uh, at, in 1996. Uh, very quickly, I first, af after my first world record, uh, I love to, uh, with, I don't know, maybe you don't know him, but Loïc Leferme yeah, uh, was yeah. a world record uh, freediver in No Limits. He was like my big brother, he, he, uh, he was my guide, and uh, he loved to film things underwater, and together we were making small clips to promote our records. Uh, yeah. And I remember uh, we were spending uh, afternoon on the computer trying to use just normal images of uh, record yeah. freediving and trying to make something artistic. Uh, yeah. It was kind of hard, but play with the music, play with... The so it's, it, it started like that. Then in 2003, we went to Afghanistan oh. on an expedition to cross the country and to dive in a lake at 4,000 meters altitude. And uh, Loic was like, okay, let's let's buy a camera and let's, let's make a film. And so we ended up to make a documentary, 52 minutes documentary. It was the first time in my life to, to bring mm -hmm. a camera. So he yeah. was filming me, I was filming him, and we, make every, we made everything. The script, the, the, the editing. Yeah. The, so I was, I was not a director or not, nothing like that, but I fell in love a bit about this idea of being creative with this underwater world who is full of magic. And then uh, I started to take pictures in all the travel I was doing outside. But the real moment everything changed was in 2010 when with Julie we did a free fall video. And once again, it happened by chance. Yeah. By chance, because I was competing. I was competing for, uh, this in this competition called Vertical Blue. And uh, it was a while since I had this idea of uh, um, uh, filming an underwater base jump because it was one of my dream when I was younger to make base jump with a wingsuit and fly on air and I was like okay I will never do that it's too dangerous so let's <laughs> do it underwater and w I was playing without camera to do that with friends we were jumping and we were and one day in the Bahamas I don't know why we were like okay this all is the perfect landscape I had this camera ooh, 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 like I got from my previous sponsor just to take some pictures and, uh, and to send yeah. them pictures. And that was the moment I said to Julie, yeah. okay, I have an idea. Let's film it just for fun. Take the camera, I will walk and we'll stand by uh, close to the hole. I will jump and we will see how it, uh, mm -hmm. how, how it end up. And then we make this movie as a, really a, as a holiday movie. Yeah. We make the edit on the, the uh, what's the um, iMovie, uh, iMovie, like the software, like, like really as, as amateurs. <laughs> I put the music I had on my, um, on my, um, uh, on my phone because I love this music. And it was a while since I, w I wanted to make something with this music. Press the button on YouTube and then we lost control of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys have seen this. Great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I think this one is for you, Guillaume. Thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot, Matt. That was a lot Thank of fun. <coughs> We're going to play uh, One Breath Around the World in a second, just, you know, to have everybody here enjoying that, just with music and everything. Um, after that, at 2 o'clock, we talk about how to safely fly your drone on dive trips. Also something important. Guillaume, thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah.